Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So I planted these lettuce, arugula, and spinach close together because I planned on doing a cut and come again method, which I'm gonna do now, and I'll show you what I mean by that. You can actually get away with planting some of these pretty close together without much hindrance in how they grow as long as you're regularly trimming them back and keeping them small. Let's go ahead and start harvesting and getting these trimmed back and you'll see what I mean. So as you guys can see, I've got these pretty close together and you can see they're starting to grow over top of each other. Their leaves are starting to kind of touch and that's gonna block sunlight from some of them. Now we recently had a frost and it did damage a couple of these leaves. So some of these I'm not gonna be harvesting, I'm just gonna be plucking off. You can see here I've got some yellowing going on because that was damaged. Some of the older leaves are. Part of this is not gonna be harvesting, part of it is just gonna be trimming this up and getting it ready. You could use sharp scissors, but I find these plants don't have anything in the way of disease near me. So I'm not really too worried about just pinching it off and not having a super clean cut. So what I do is I grab it, and I use the thumbnail against the pad of my finger and just pinch and it'll, it'll come right off, like so. So I'm not gonna keep that, I'm gonna throw it aside and I've got chickens so I'm gonna go ahead and feed those to the chickens, any of these that don't look great. Some of these smaller ones down here actually are looking pretty good. Again, this one has some yellowing going on, I'll give it to the chickens and they'll eat it. They love this stuff. So I say that I'm gonna feed these to the chickens. I am feeding the arugula, it's good for them. The spinach though, now it's still fine. I can definitely feed the spinach to them, but it's something I wanna limit because too much spinach can cause, at least what I read, can cause some um, uh, soft shells. So we don't want that. So I've got some weeds in here, so that's nice too. I'm able to pull all these out and get all the weeds out. They're pretty well established now, so they're starting to grow quite quickly. And so I'm not too worried about over harvesting because they'll grow right back. In fact, it might make them grow back a little quicker. It might be starting to bolt on me. I'm seeing a flower there. I'm gonna pluck that flower off. We did have some warm weather here right after a freeze. So could have been what caused it. We're looking really good. Let's do the same thing with the spinach here. All right, so it gave me quite a bit of arugula. That's to eat. There's a couple with some, I might take that one out. A couple with some bug holes on it, but they're okay. And that's what I'm giving to the chicken. So I took quite a bit out. And really in reality, I wanna be doing this a little more often. About once a week you wanna do this. I had waited two weeks just because we had a frost and I, I wanted to ensure that they kind of grew back really good. Now I'm gonna be doing it once a week. And if they really start growing, even, even up to two times a week. So these big spinach leaves are a little bit tough, but this one doesn't look too bad. Some of these do, like that one is going to the chickens. Now these ones are perfectly fine to be picking from. They're not as big and not as developed, but it's okay. You can really almost, once they're established, take them down to like just a couple leaves and they'll be okay. They'll bounce right back. But I really wanna make sure I get any of these diseased leaves off. Just make the plant overall a lot healthier. And I had some frost damage on these. You can see some of it is bug pressure, but other ones are actually, parts of the older leaves got burnt. And you can see here that um, it kind of just died away, decayed away. Now the picking spinach, it's a little different. You actually can just bend it and it'll pop right off. You don't have to pinch it. So, and that'll get it a little closer to the plant. Now you guys can see that's really thinned out quite a bit. They're not encroaching on each other. It's looking really good. And so that'll give these some room to now grow and expand. Sunlight will get into each of them. I mean, even these, those are really close together. They just weren't, this one really should have been planted over just slightly, but even so, once you remove all the leaves and harvest some, then it, it opens it up and allows them to get healthier. So don't worry about hurting them with the cut and come again method because it actually makes them better. So we'll let those grow and in a week I'll come back out and harvest some more. I might not be getting very much of this lettuce actually because a lot of the leaves are very damaged from the frost. And so all the good sized leaves, there's a good one, I could eat that one. 
most of the good sized leaves are just unusable. So I'm really more just cleaning this section up, getting it healthy to start regrowing. And I wanna say that some of these got a little damaged, like the plant itself. So they're just not gonna, they might not grow. They're kinda growing a little funky. So since they did hit the freeze, they're not growing as vigorously as they did. And they're kinda a little more, like the leaves aren't as nice and smooth as they were more roughly, which I like ruffled, but that's not what this variety is supposed to be. Just because a plant survives a frost doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna thrive afterwards. But we'll give it all the help that it can get, remove all this dead stuff, and hope that they can come back. We'll see how these did. The red lettuce tends to do a lot better in frosts. And this definitely sustained far less damage. In fact, that leaf looks really good. So, it's still more ruffly than these were. I believe this is called the Merlot variety. Let me see, yep, Merlot. And normally these would survive all winter here just we had an abnormal freeze just like the rest of the United States and it really damaged a lot of these plants that I had here. For most of the United States planting in the middle of winter is not not great when it comes to things like lettuce and really I mean some places nothing grows in winter it's just too cold but here in Texas we usually have pretty mild winters without much in the way of freeze and the pest pressure usually is a little bit lighter in the winter as well so it's really good time to grow lettuce i mean in the summer it's just way too hot for it we have a narrow window here it's really just winter but get hit with a big frost like we did can really damage a lot of these plants well let's go ahead and feed these to the chickens got a lot of green vegetation to feed them and it's good because the feed store was out of their feed, I had said in another video, and I still haven't gotten them any. I think I heard that they're gonna have it today, so I might run over today and pick it up, but this will give them a little extra food, keep their stomachs full. I'm gonna have to spray out their water in a second here. They got it all messy. Two or three times a day, I gotta do that. So all the leaves that kind of were unedible in my mind or had some bug damage to it, stuff that just wasn't super edible for us, super appetizing, pass it along to them and they're eating it up. They love it. They're a little less picky than we are. So nothing goes to waste. This is converted into eggs for us and then of course into manure. And I mean, it wasn't a big harvest in lettuce, but that's enough for a salad. And I can throw in a little bit of the baby spinach for this salad and it'll be really good. The rest of the salad and arugula I'm gonna use as a saute. I'm just gonna cook it. Um, a little bit of garlic and it's real good. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates. Also, if you could hit the like button, it would really help me and the channel out. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.